Hi, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about what if he does. <laughs> so what made me want to talk about what if he does is earlier today, I was, you know, of course, this is, today is Thanksgiving. So, I mean, if you're the type of person who really wants to know, like, what day this is, and even though it's Thanksgiving today, and you'll probably see this, like, two weeks from now or something like that, because I was going to put this posted today, but there's another another video that's already been scheduled. And whenever I try to do two, it always does, like, a thing where it'll want to do both, or it'll wait to put the other one out, but it'll say it was posted today. So I can't go back and change it. So this one will come out just in order. And I know like some people are probably gonna say, well, now I know like how far ahead our videos are. You probably still don't know because sometimes like if I'm feeling something in my spirit and God says post it, it might post that day. And so it still might be another three weeks. It might be a month behind or whatever else. So you just never will be able to know <laughs> how far back these videos really are. And so I was sitting there today and I was really just, reflecting again <laughs> I was really just thinking about all the things that God has done and I'm a little tired that's why my voice sounds like this I just got finished reading aloud and <laughs> reading the Bible aloud and I was just like I was reading like second Colossians and it talked about just focusing on God and allowing knowing that you know through faith as long as we're following him that he's taken us the rest of the way that all of our sins have been covered when Jesus Christ gave up his life for us when he died just for us when he walked the way that he did through life though the things that he did is how we should aspire to be in life and no matter how good someone sounds or what it is that they say even though it sounds appeasing even though it's a temporary satisfaction we shouldn't be just falling behind that because it seems like it's beneficial or it looks pleasant. Not everything that looks pleasant is going to be pleasant, just like fool's gold. It might look like gold, but it's not, you know, things like that. And it's just, as I sat there, and this was before I read the Bible, but I really was just sitting there in my car as I was on the way home from like Thanksgiving. And of course, today is the day that people really give thanks for the things that they have. And I know you're probably thinking, well, you give thanks every day because you should be, you know, happy with the things that you have. And I do. I have a grateful, thankful and uh, <laughs> devotional thing that I do every single morning. So this is just uh, uh, every day for me. The only difference is I get to spend it with more family members and friends or things like that. So, of, of course, that's special and that's amazing. And I love I mean, the food doesn't hurt. <laughs> I mean, you know, so. It's just, as I was on the way home, I ate a lot of food today. Like, I would like to pretend that I didn't struggle with gluttony today, but I probably did a little. Because this is the one day of year that I get to eat my favorite food. And I don't feel guilty about it. Like, I really just eat it because I really, really want it. Not because I am just like, oh no, I don't want to mess up my figure. And I'm a little bloated right now, but I don't know if you could tell or not, but it probably doesn't matter. Like, eh, I put on this shirt under because I don't want the shirt to be all like that. I just wanted, I wanted to wear it, but I don't know if it's because of the material or what, but it shrunk. Uh, I wouldn't say it shrunk. I would say when I bought it, it was like this, but now, so like the back is longer than the front is or whatever. I don't know how to explain it, but it's a little different. And then the type of pants that I'm wearing it probably doesn't help that I got on these like jeggings because I was like when I eat <laughs> like really eat not just like a little salad or a little bit of this or that or a plate of cucumbers or something like when I'm really eating <laughs> I'm probably gonna need a little room <laughs> and so I just I mean of course like the weird thing is I didn't feel full I felt like, hmm, okay, like I could eat more, but I wasn't trying to overeat, but I also knew that this is the only chance I can get at eating this type of food, like that I get to have once a year. And it wasn't just like, I mean, all of the food was delicious, but my favorite food was there. And I was just like, 
and people were like oh man like I never see you eat like this and it's true I don't eat like that all the time so this one day a year <laughs> that I get to like really indulge in this type of food and I mean the old me would have tripled that amount of the amount of things that I ate but it's probably because I eat healthy and I I wanted to enjoy it but I didn't want to I didn't want to be like really glutton I really I wanted to just have I wanted to have a lot of it but not so much that I just ate like once I felt full I didn't want to just keep going like I did eat like another one or two of the things that I liked but I didn't just like constant like once I felt like okay I'm full then I was like nope no more the old me probably would have got like six more um, helpings of the same thing but I was just like nope that's it you enjoyed it it's been here it's gone it was temporary satisfaction like don't be eating so much that you can't lose it or like exercise it off in the next couple days or so so I had to really be mindful of that and I had little snacks and things that I did to help with my di digestive system and things like that so I really wanted to focus on that and so <laughs> let me get back to this so as I enjoyed myself as I spent time with my family on the way home I really had this thought that scared me and I know some people are going to be like what why would you even think that that's so weird for you to even think of something like that but I was sitting there and I was just feeling like a I was feeling content and I was just really you know pondering hmm, pondering I was really just like going through my like I was going through my thoughts and different things like reviewing things that I've done in the past and really really trying to like just have a moment where I really think about the things that I've done in life the things that I want to do the things that I'm trying to do and things like that see even now I'm like doing this usually I'm like all open like oh yeah snatched you know but because I ate a lot I'm like okay yeah like I don't want to do that in my life and I know a lot of women that have lost weight maybe even men I don't know if men do this but when you are not the weight that you want to be you do like this or you wear stuff that's like fitted a little different because you don't want people to see like your problem areas or something like that but it's just a temporary area it's not a problem area it's not a problem because it's just another thing that you can improve upon if you really want to it's not you know and I'm not saying for people to have like really serious issues that they can't change it because it's like a condition I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying in general. So for me, like people, if, when I first lost the weight and I wasn't like, like huge, but I wasn't the size that I wanted to be. And so I, <laughs> when I first lost that small portion of weight, I just was like, well, before I was like, wearing a lot of baggy stuff I would wear like big t-shirts and like things like that just because I was like I there was an, I didn't want any attention I didn't want anything that would be fitted or anything like that because I just felt like so like I don't know how to describe it like insecure I don't know but I just really felt like I was constantly thinking about it all the time and so once I lost the weight I was like I mean, no matter what I tried on, everything looked decent. So it was just like, oh, okay. Like, I don't have to worry about a roll here or or back back stuff there or, you know, a pudge there or whatever else. Like, like because I had worked so hard eating healthy and exercising and all the other stuff, my stomach was always flat. And so, I mean, there might be the times that I eat, like, something that I know bloats me that I would be like, I'd be a little bloated, but other than that, I'd be fine. And so like, I would wear stuff like this because it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> but I'm really bloated right now. Like, I know some people are going to be like, oh, whatever, but no, seriously, that's why 
I didn't even want to put the camera like this. I was like, I wanted to put the camera up here, but I wanted to be real because I'm a real person. I'm not just a some person that doesn't deal with the normal stuff or whatever else. So I wanted to make sure that I really was just being true to myself and transparent and not just pretending as if nothing ever bothers me or nothing ever makes me feel a certain type of way. And so I'm wearing this outfit and <laughs> you see my hands are still crossed because I'm just like, I feel uncomfortable when I when I eat like that because I know that it I blow up really fast and I know that if I'm not careful I can gain weight super super duper fast and if I'm not careful it'll mess up my skin it'll mess up it'll mess up a bunch of things like the health of my nails my skin my my body like my digestive tract like a whole bunch of things that have to do with your health are influenced by the food that you eat and things like that that you put in or on your body so you have to be really really treating your body as a temple like seriously and so for me like whenever I I eat the wrong thing I always feel uncomfortable like in my own skin if that makes any sense and so it's not all the time it's like I know you're probably thinking well you might have like a slice of pizza so you're gonna like do this every time you have a slice of pizza probably not like if I know like what type of foods agree with me and what type of foods don't like what type of foods will bloat me and what type of foods won't or whatever else then I'll just be like okay if I'm gonna eat this I'm gonna wear sweatpants today instead of fitted jeans or whatever something like that and so it really won't matter but when I'm wearing like something like this well these are jeggings but if they they were regular jeans I'd be like you know and so It's just another thing that I would have to be concerned about for no reason when it's something that I can improve upon. Like, why make my life harder than it has to be? And regardless if people say, oh, I like you thicker or I like you smaller, I like myself fit. I like myself healthy. I like myself when I'm taking care of my body. Like, seriously, like the more that I cherish the body that I have, that I really respect my temple, the better I feel about my body. Like, If I'm eating bad food that's trash, that's not helping with my energy, that's that's really just bloating me or make my body look the way that I don't want it to look, then it's it's not going to make me feel as confident as I usually would. And I know you're probably saying, well, that's kind of shallow. Like people should just like you for who you are. I'm not worried about the other people right now. I'm worried about me. I'm worried about me feeling comfortable in my own skin. And I want to make sure that like if I don't feel good about myself and then someone comes up to me and says oh I don't like you I might feel like oh my gosh it's because I gained three pounds or you know like something ridiculous and so I just really have to make sure that I'm on my game for myself because when people come at me with the ridiculousness I need to make sure that I'm good like regardless of what anyone else says and so for every person like man woman whatever you really have to love who you are regardless like if you and this is in a healthy way I'm not talking about all the unhealthy stuff that you're trying to justify no one's okay with that and you shouldn't be okay with that because that's not you respecting or taking care of your body that's just some some disillusioned thing that you have in your mind that's like you just just having this real mindset this twisted mindset of what what good what's what's really good for you is and so I know my voice is like so tired right now because I'm like it's late and I really am tired but I was gonna do this video but I was like oh my gosh I didn't read the bible I need to go read it because I don't want to go read the bible tired that's the worst thing and I do read it before I go to bed or like at night because I like to have this I like to be in God's presence in the morning and at night like I like to start my day and end my day with God every day Because I want to make sure that he knows that he's number one. That my main focus is him. And so I just, I think we really need to appreciate and love us the way that we love us. So like for me, like I said, I like my hair in any style. Sometimes I like my hair when it's straight. Sometimes I like my hair when it's curly. Sometimes I like my hair in braids. Sometimes I, I mean, it's just, it depends on the day. You know how it is. Like. I mean, girls, you know how it is. I don't know if it's like this for a woman that's not of color, but for women, women of my ethnicity, 
usually we like to tra- change our hair like we change our clothes honestly unless we have a like a hairstyle that we just absolutely love and we want to stick with it and then <laughs> then it's something real like heartbreaking or like some kind of event happens in our life our whole hairstyle change we might cut our hair super short because it's just like it's like our hair is like an extension of us if that makes any sense our hair is like our crown and I don't mean our crown and like the the whole getting on the bandwagon of the queens thing and stuff like that I mean like they used to say your crown and joy or whatever but I'm not saying I'm idolizing my hair I'm just saying that it really is like an extension of who we are as um women of color and I say that because it's true and because and a lot of other people might not understand that because they feel like oh yeah let me just do my hair like this because this other person had their hair like this okay I mean you get inspiration from other people but for us when you see us do a drastic change it's because life hit us it's because something really happened it's because we needed a change it's usually not just because oh we just got tired of wearing our hair like this so we decided to change it to something super drastic usually something happened in our life (laughs) because we can't take that same hair in the next situation like for real and for me which is weird because this time I didn't change my hair I mean I did I did like different styles that were like another extension of me but like before (laughs) with this transition from that long-term relationship to being single I would have probably had just cut my hair real short and I would have wore it, like, I don't know if I would have wore it natural. Maybe. See, I don't know if I could have pulled it off, wear my hair that short natural, because I would have had to start it all over. And I've been natural for, like, six years or so. So for me, starting over now would be like, oh, really? You know? <laughs> Unless I started doing, like, short hair wigs or something. I just, like, got my hair braided or something and just wore, like, the little sloop. Because... <laughs> Before I was in my relationship, I I went through something and I cut my hair short and everyone loved it. Like, I loved it because it was just like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. Like, I just go in and get a texturizer every two weeks and I literally just like put my hair down, tie it up at night, take it out. And then in the morning, I would just comb through it and it would like the curls would just pop up and it would just be, I'd be good to go. And I would have like it long in the front. So I would have this, like I would do the feathered look where it would go over and it'd be like a feather right here. And all of this would be tapered and short. And it was so cute. And I don't know what it was, but I just eventually was just like, no, I'm going to grow my hair out because some days I didn't feel like doing my hair and I couldn't wait that two weeks (laughs) to get my hair fresh again. I had to like, I was like, I miss being able to put it in a ponytail. So if I don't feel like doing it, I can just slick it up and it's good to go and so (laughs) I will say that I wore my hair more natural when I was in the relationship because I was like going through that journey and all this other stuff but when I became single I I wore my hair like mostly wigs or something like that just to protect my hair or I would wear my hair in braids or I would wear my hair like I I got to a point after I started working on myself where I was like, okay, I got to go back to doing some natural hairstyles because I don't want it to just be only doing straight hair or only doing braids all the time, but they're so convenient. And I mean, even this didn't take long. I just parted it and then I just used some shine. I know back in the day, people probably remember what that is, but I just used some shine and then just swoop, swooped it right on up. And then I just was like, because I was <laughs> no lie going to put my hair I was going to put my hair in um I was going to part it in the middle and pull it back and do like a ball right here and I was just going to do like little pieces like I have out right now which they don't ever do what they what I want them to do like this piece is curl is going out and really it was supposed to be like that so it is what it is. It's just going to do what it does. It always, the hair just does whatever it does all the time. And so, <laughs> so I just decided to do this today because I was like, oh, it's cute. And it looks like, you know, it took effort, but really it's just me like brushing it and then putting it in these things. So it's all good. Yep. And so, 
So I just decided to do this. But I do try to wear my hair natural because I don't want to make it seem as if I don't love my natural hair. Sometimes I just like to do something that's easier or less manipulation because honestly, when I wear my hair like this, every day I have to put water and conditioner on it or it will start to get dry because it's, it's out in all the elements and it's my hair is hitting against my shoulders and it's it might split my ends or whatever else. So for me to really protect my hair, sometimes I would have to put like a wig on or I would have to do braids or something like that to keep my ends covered, especially with the different weather and all the other things. So <laughs> I know I went off on a whole hair thing, but I think it's really important for me to be able to I don't want to say educate because I don't want to always be that person that's educating people on things that they can learn on their own. I just I just want to say that like I think it's it's cool for other people to want to learn more about another culture or ethnicity or whatever else to try to gain knowledge so that they can be more understanding instead of just judging or being like, oh, well, I loved your hair long. Why did you just decide to cut your hair? whatever that girl went through <laughs> she was like I gotta let it go because it's not worth it or whatever else maybe she has short hair and she decided I'm gonna just wear my hair long or I'm just gonna wear it whatever way sometimes we find a style that just works and like for me my style that just works is probably I do like this the braids whenever I do like the jumbo braids that just works it's like, I don't want to say it always looks good, but it, it lasts a while. I don't have to worry about my hair. I don't have to manipulate it. I can just, I mean, no matter how, what time of day it is, it always looks fresh. Like I just, I woke up like this, you know, <laughs> so it's really good. But I'm saying all of that because I think it's really important for us in a healthy way to really just love ourselves at every stage. To know that, like, not try to just jump to a judgment because someone does change their hair or they change something about them. And you're like, oh, but I like them in black. But it's their personal choice. It's what it is that they like. It's what it is that works for them. You can't try to make someone into something that you want them to be because it makes you happy. Like, what about them? They need to be happy as well with themselves. And so for me, when I am taking care of my body, when I'm healthy, when I'm doing the things that I need to do, I feel the best. I'm more confident. I walk with my head held high. I'm I'm unashamed. I, I'm more focused on just leading with love and kindness and focused on what people are thinking about my appearance or whatever else. And so for me, my happiest, most healthiest, most secure or confident self is me working out every day. I know some people are going to say I'm never going to work out every day. And I understand because it's not it's not easy. It's something that you really do have to continue to keep doing at the beginning, just kind of like reading the Bible. When you first read the Bible, sometimes you fall asleep. Sometimes you will feel like, oh my gosh, do I have to do this? And eventually it'll grow on you. And it'll be something that like, for me, the more that Satan try to make me not want to read the Bible, the more I would read. So he does this by trying to distract you at the time where you're reading. I'll read it. And then my distraction, um, my mind will be distracted and I'll completely miss the whole like two or three verses that I read. And I'm like, I don't even remember what I read. And most people would just keep going and then be like, well, I'm done. I read it. I read it and read it and read it until Satan stops distracting me from it. And usually when I read it like the third or fourth time and Satan knows that I'm not giving up, he gives up and he flees. Because he has no other choice because I'm not going to stop reading until I understand it. I don't care if it takes all night long. I might want to watch that show or I might want to go to bed, but I will have all the energy I need because I'm seeking God first. I'm not saying stay up until two o'clock in the morning. If you know you got to work early in the morning, go to sleep, get your schedule right so you can get all eight hours of sleep or whatever the healthy amount of time or the time that your body needs to recuperate and to feel energized in the morning. Do that. And allow it to be a time so that you can actually have enough time to, to spend time with God, to really reflect and meditate on the word. Don't just read it. Don't just try to seek understanding from the word. Really meditate on it. Really allow it, allow it to penetrate your heart, your soul, so that you can be changed. So that it's not just something that you just see or listen to at one moment. And then you have spiritual amnesia. 
is something that you really get to to take in, something that that really seeps into your mind so that you have more knowledge in your heart so that you are you're more open to to just being more loving and things like that. And so <laughs> I'm saying all of this stuff, but I really <laughs> did not expect to say all of that. When I was <laughs> I'm going back to the beginning. <laughs> You know how I am. My mind is always constantly running. And I'm trying not to make this video too long because my voice is starting to hurt because I am tired. And so, <laughs> so I'm on the way home and I'm really thinking like, what if he does do it? What I'm thinking about like all of the, mem I don't know if you remember or if you watched the video yesterday, but I was talking about how it seemed like I just keep, keep meeting a whole bunch of people that I'm never going to be with. Like it's people that either I'm not interested in or they're not interested in me or they're just absolutely not the right person or they don't see my value or don't, they don't see my worth, my worth or it's the right time, the wrong time or whatever else it is. It's something. And so, <laughs> so I really was sitting in the car and as I was thinking about like the things, the decisions that I made, the people that I've met, things that I've said, and the video from yesterday, I just had like this, this feeling, this voice, whatever you want to tell it, whatever you want to call it, like I just had this thought in my mind that came up that was just like, what if he does? What if God does come through? What if he does? <laughs> no, I know he's going to come through. It's not me saying like, what if like he wouldn't like like he's a God that he lies or he wouldn't come through. Like, of course, God will come through. God always keeps his word. He's going to do everything that he said he would do. It's not that I would ever doubt anything like that. But for me personally, as me being a human, as me being a person, as me never seeing things, and you know, faith is the hope of things unseen. When I'm sitting there and I'm really thinking like right now, I'm comfortable. I don't have to worry about anybody. I'm not talking to anybody nobody's checking for me like it's <laughs> is I'm good like honestly like really I'm good what if God does send somebody tomorrow what am I gonna do like what am I going to do I'm freaking out right now I'm just kidding <laughs> no I'm not freaking out but I'm just like I really started to think about it like am I ready could I even be ready like God's not going to send someone prematurely. So obviously I would be ready, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I'm so worried about, well, really I wasn't ready, worried at all because I was just like, I'm going to be single. And then like, I would see people do the wrong things and meet all these people that are not the right people, but, <laughs> or just not the right time or whatever else it is, or don't see my worth or my value or appreciate me or whatever else it is. And I was just like, that's kind of what I was expecting anyways. I was never expecting anybody to really be the real deal or to really want to be with me or if it, I don't know about being the right time. I really didn't think about that being an option, but I just was thinking like, oh, you know, this is good. Like, I really don't have to worry about this, but there will be a day where I do not have to worry about it, but it will be a thing. And I was like, what if God says tomorrow you're ready? Like, let's say tomorrow or next week I go to this thing. I meet this person. And we have a connection. And what if that does happen? What if he does? He said that this was going to happen and this happens. And the next thing you know, I'm in a thing. Relationship. Say the word. <laughs> Like, goodness gracious. See, I can't even say the word. So it's things like that that's like, oh my gosh, like, but I know that God would never give me anything prematurely. But I really did have that moment where I was thinking like, oh my gosh, like, God really doesn't lie about what he says he's going to do. So if God does this thing in my life, like, what am I going to do then? <laughs> like, I was so ready for it to never happen. What if it does happen? What if he does give me the opportunity that he said he was going to give me for my business? What if I do change the world? What if I do meet someone who actually appreciates and treats me the right way? What am I going to do then? And I honestly don't know what I would do. Hopefully, I would just follow God's lead. 
and do all of the things that I need to do. My hope for me would be that I would be ready and God would never send me something prematurely. So of course I would be ready. Whatever it is that I would need to do, God would be working through me so that he can make sure that I don't end up putting that off on someone who is his child. He would not want to give me a person so that I can damage this person or be invulnerable with this person or be the type of, of person who brings toxicity into the situation, into the relationship. I'm going to I'm going to start saying relationship because I'm going to stop being afraid to say that word. <laughs> and so it just really. I know God is who he says he is, and it's just for me. It's, it's so weird because. I'm not used to, I don't want to say I'm not used to happiness because let's be perfectly honest that happiness has always been there. I just haven't been seeking it. And God has always been there. I haven't always been seeking him. And so while, while I like to pretend like as if life's been nothing but sorrow, I have always had, God has always been there. Happiness has always been obtainable. It's just that I wasn't seeking it. Just like the other things in my life that God is going to present in my life, the me changing the world or whatever else it is that God decides to do in my life. Even if I don't know how the outcome is going to happen or when it's going to happen or how or who, when it does happen, I need to be ready. And I need to stop playing around <laughs> and acting as if it's impossible or like I don't have to worry about the, I mean, I don't have to worry about anything, but I don't have to be concerned with this. I don't have to, this is not a thing that's, that's going to be like an issue at all because when it happens, I'm just going to be blah, but I need to really check my attitude because if I'm being honest lately, I've had like this, I've been on the. I've been in a weird position where I've been feeling like, why be happy if I'm going to keep meeting these people who is going nowhere with? Like, like why come off as happy so I can keep drawing this attention for no reason and then keep getting disappointed or disappointed in myself because of the way that I carry myself or the things that I say or saying the wrong thing or saying something that someone takes the wrong way or whatever else. And it's just like, oh, no, I don't know if I can go through that again, <laughs> like again and again and again and again and over and over and over and over and over and so on and so forth. And so for me, God is telling me I'm stronger than that. He's telling me that just because this doesn't work out doesn't mean that that won't work out just because. <laughs> and really, this is a true test of patience for real, because. <laughs> I don't know if I would have made it this far as the old me. I know I wouldn't have, especially without God. And so it's like, God will show you that you can, you're stronger than you think that you are. And it's so weird. It's, it's not weird. It's, it's not normal because I'm outside of my comfort zone because he's pushing me to different limits because he's showing me that I can withstand these things that I can go through rejection and be fine that I can go through meeting these different people and I will know that these are not the people for me. He's showing me that I, I really am learning what it is that I truly need in my life and not just what I want. Like the old me probably would have been attracted to somebody and we would have had like the same favorite ice cream or something crazy and ridiculous like that. And we would have been together and I would have just put up with them. But the new me is like, what are your core values? <laughs> like, are we really both faith-based? Are we equally yoked? Do you, are you really going to appreciate me? Like, are you going to pursue me? Is it going to be consistency? Things like that. Like, I don't care how fine you are. You could look like you just stepped off of a magazine. I don't know what. I'm just making up something. But I don't care about that. I don't care about how much money you have. I know people are going to get on me. I mean, of course, I don't want someone who doesn't have some sort of vision on their life, who isn't following after God, who doesn't have some sort of purpose. I don't want anyone like that at all. I also don't want someone who feels like because they make a ton of money, they can just be like, oh, I don't want to spend time with you. Here's some money. Like, 
I don't want that at all. Like, and I know that's slim pickings because a lot of people that make a lot of money really want you to just be all about them. They want you to just accept whatever it is that they give you. They want to breadcrumb you and they feel like you're just going to be okay with it because most women are and I'm not. And so for me, it's real hard because it's going to be a real special person who has common decency, who really does respect themselves and will respect me. It's going to have to be someone who has a good head on their shoulders, who is kind, who is willing to be patient in certain aspects of of their life. I mean, I'm practicing patience because I struggle with patience. I don't expect any person to be perfect, but I expect them to have dignity and self-respect. I expect them to to respect themselves enough to know, you know, just just have a intentionality. And not everyone is like that. So of course, <laughs> another one advice with us is just like my theme song for now for the season because I'm not in Jesus' name going to lower my standards for anyone. Because I don't care how much money you have. Thank you. That's really great. And I don't care how fine you think you are. I understand girls go crazy over you. Yay. You know, (laughs) I don't care about any of that stuff because that's not important to me. What's important to me is what you are at your core. And if you are not a nice person, I don't want to talk to you. If you're, (laughs) if you feel like I don't deserve respect you're probably not the person for me. If you feel like you can't appreciate me, then it's not going to work out. And so I'm going to be in a single season until God shows me that this is the person that is supposed to be in your life because I'm not settling for that. I'm not lowering my standards. I mean, yes, I do have moments where it's hard, where I do the wrong thing, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just normal human nature. And I also take that as a lesson and learn from it. I try not to let Satan just penetrate my mind and make me really feel guilty or insecure about not standing up for certain things. But I'm not always going to make the exact right decision right away every single time. I'm always going to make mistakes because I'm a human. I'm always going to mess up because I'm human. I'm going to fail because I have to know what a win looks like. Like, that's just life. And so, and while I say this about guys or the person who could be a potential person or whatever else, I'm not saying it because I want people to watch this video or go onto my page or one of my, my social media sites and DM me and then pretend to be this guy because you can't fake authenticity. You can never pretend to be have good principles and really have good morals or stand or have good core values. That's something that you really truly have to have. So you can pretend all you want, but the true you is going to seep through regardless. And also, <laughs> I am not perfect. I know I say that over and over and over again, but I really am not. And so I don't expect any person to be perfect. I don't expect them to think that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. So why would they think that only God's perfect? So Hopefully, (laughs) people know that I'm going to have issues. There's going to be things that I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm probably going to do something wrong. I mean, whatever else. Like, that's just me being an actual human being. Like, yes, you might be attracted to me, but no, I might not be perfect. It just is what it is. I'm never going to be perfect, no matter what happens, no matter if you try to make me into something that I'm not or not. I'm never going to be what you want me to be because I'm going to be a human being, not a robot. So it's just reality. I'm just telling you like it is because (laughs) I just don't, I don't know. It's out here in these streets, man, something else. (laughs) So I just, I don't want to make this into that type of thing. I really want this to be hopeful because I know it just sounds like a bunch of people, so you still single, like like a lot of the women that watch this are going to be like, so you still single? Okay. Like, yeah, she's talking all of this stuff, but she's not with anyone. Like, mm, okay. <laughs> and I know, I understand. It's fine. I also want you to know that hopefully, if you see me and you are single, like for the women out there who are also single, it's okay. Like, yes, it sucks. 
for the women that aren't getting hit on, it might feel like you're invisible, but the right person will see you and make. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what was about to happen. I'm like having like indigestion at like whatever age I am <laughs> on camera and everything, but it's all good. Okay. I'm so tired. I just need to go to sleep. And so mm -mm -mm. even though you're single, it's fine. It's going to be okay. Just thank God that he's hiding you from all of these other people that could be wasting your time. Because it's allowing you to come up with the things that really truly matter to you. Think of all of your standards that really are something that are are what God intended for you. Honor yourself and respect yourself so that other people can honor and respect you. Use that time to serve in different places. Help out your family member and your friends. Help out different people in the, in the community. Do things that are going to benefit the community. Whatever it is that you need to do, do that. Not to take your mind off of not being with someone, but so that you can give back. In a, in a way that is beneficial to the kingdom, that's beneficial to the world. If you're not adding to the world, you're taken away from it. And you don't want to be that person that's pulling from something and not, not adding to anything. And so for the women that are like me that get hit on all the time, just know, <laughs> just take it as a compliment. It's fine. You know, at least you know that people are attracted to you. You get attention. Yay. I mean, I don't want to say it like that. It's it's great. It does. It's awesome. You know, it's cool. Things like that. And just know that because you have you have good examples of what you don't want, when you do find what you do want, it'll be easy to spot it. Or when you when the timing is right, it'll be good. So you won't have to feel like it's so hard to discern what's godly and what's not or what's for you and what's not. So just take it as a blessing that God didn't make you be with this person for a year of your time that's wasted that you'll never get back. Allow this to be like a blessing that you don't just have to be stuck with this person because you had a kid with them or something else. Like whatever it is, just just appreciate everything that you have in your life because some people are going to be wishing that they got hit on some people are going to be wishing that they weren't hit on some people are going to be wishing that you know they had this and that because the grass always looks greener but the grass is greener where you water it you have to really appreciate yourself and just honor yourself and and just know what your boundaries are and your standards so that when people do come at you the wrong way you can really stand up for yourself instead of laying down for anybody you really have to make sure that you're about that life and no, you're not going to be perfect. Don't beat yourself up about it. You're going to make mistakes because you're human. Don't think, well, this, my friend said she would never put up with anything. I feel so stupid. No, you don't feel anything. This is what you feel is like a person with emotions whose heart is broken or disappointed in yourself or the other person. You put these unrealistic qualifications on this person who can never be in that position because they were never intended for that position in your life. And my voice is hurting. <laughs> and so don't beat yourself up and really just give people points for the things that they're actually doing not things that you hope that they'll do and really think about what is beneficial to you and what's what's mutually beneficial not just what's beneficial to you or them and also know that God got you you don't have to worry about what is or isn't going to happen like me with that split moment second that I had in the car thinking about what if he does so in conclusion even if he does, I'm going to be okay because God got me. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to have faith for things that are unseen because I've never been in this area of my life. I've never done any of the things that I've done since I've been single. Like I took classes. I, I mean, I did a handstand class. I did ballroom fitness. I did target practice. I did so many different things that I would have never done before. And it was amazing. I mean, I did this one class. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to be judged, but it was so much fun. <laughs> I mean, I was up in the, I was at the ceiling. Like it was so much fun. And so <laughs> it's just things like that. You will really surprise yourself if you just take, take in all the moments and really appreciate and be grateful for the things that you're doing. And, and God will show you strength that you never even knew you had. 